Good morning. Happy morning, Tuesday, Transformers. I hope you're doing well. You've woken up well. And I want to believe that you are, you are experiencing the peace of God wherever you are. And if you're not experiencing the peace of God, I would like to pray that you experience it, you experience it right now. Uh, welcome to this Tuesday's morning, morning devotion. Uh, my name is Joannes Metich. Like I said yesterday, I'm leading you through this week's devotion. And uh, allow me to pray when as we start. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we bless you for another day. We don't take it for granted that we, we awake and we get to be in your presence and even listening to your word. As we listen to your word this morning, we pray that, Lord, you may receive preeminence in our lives. Bless us this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, yesterday, I began a journey with us talking about uh, God's hierarchy of needs. I'll not go so much into preempting, but I mentioned for those of us who didn't join us yesterday, I mentioned about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which are about we looking, uh, going forth and back and forth in this world today, looking for the things that are going to make our life uh, more meaningful on earth. The, the, the things that we need to do life every other day. And I mentioned about uh, God's hierarchy of needs. And number one hierarchy of need that, that I mentioned was poverty of the soul, poor in the spirit. And I mentioned Matthew uh, chapter 5, where Christ was talking about the Beatitudes. Allow me to go on to the second one. And the second uh, God, God's hierarchy of need that I'd like us to look at today is recon reconciliation with God. God desires that we are reconciled to him, even as his children. It doesn't matter how much wealth I get to gather. It doesn't matter how much status I get to gather. It doesn't matter how much fame I have until I'm reconciled with God. Allow me to read Romans chapter 5 from verse 10. Romans chapter 5 from verse 10, it says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we, we, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Reconciliation means being restored. Being restored. Who doesn't like restoration? Who doesn't like being renewed? Who doesn't like like if you have been in a, if you have crossed ways with your parents or with your best friend and you'd like to have this friend back, who doesn't want these such beautiful relationships to be restored? When you have crossed uh, roads with your best friend, who doesn't like this kind of friendship that is beneficial to you being restored back to you? So the Bible says, for, when, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his only son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. I'd like to impress on our hearts this morning that God requires and desires that you and I are reconciled back to him. Luke chapter 10 verse 4. When Christ visited Martha, Martha was distracted with much serving, giving eye service, giving, giving the best as per the eye. And most of the time in our life every day, we get distracted by giving eye service, what pleases the eye, so that you receive that recognition, so that you are identified as Jijoanais, you are the most hardworking, receive this uh, medal, receive this. But God is seeking that your soul be reconciled back to him. Your life is reconciled back to him. And this morning, I'd like you and I to make a prayer that God is going to help us not to be distracted with offering eye service, which is what we all seek for every other day. When I go to my institution of service, I want to work very hard so that my immediate boss realizes that I'm working so hard so that he gives, he or she identifies me as the best employee for that year. It is all good. Like I said yesterday, that is all good. Pursue that. I'm not against that at all. 
But at the end of the day, are we being reconciled back to God? He gave his only begotten son who died for our sins. And even as we seek after everything else, let's seek reconciliation with God. Let's not be overcome by distractions of being worried and troubled about many things, about what you're going to wear, what you're going to dress, what you're going to eat. Let's look at being reconciled back to God. The Lord is our light and our salvation. And fear is not going to be your portion, even as you're looking towards being reconciled with God. What is the worst that God can do for you? There's nothing, there's no evil that God can do to you. The, we, we, we look at seeking the world and seeking the things of the world that destroy even the body. The Bible says, Christ mentioned, why look at, why seek for the things or look for things that are going to destroy the world, the, the, or things of the world that are going to destroy your body and soul. Let's look, look for reconciliation with God that is going to keep both our body and our souls in eternity. Let's not be overcome by the things of this world. David said in Psalm 122 and 1, verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. When you get into the house of the, the Lord and we get into that place of praise and worship, a place I love so much, when, when my heart connects with God and I feel in that moment that I'm, I'm being reconciled with God, I'm being restored to the place where God desires me to be. And it's my prayer that this day you're going to seek to be at that place where God desires you to be, a place of worship, a place of worshiping him in truth and in spirit seeking him every other day despite the distractions around you your soul can still stay stay uh, connected to where God wants you to be in Matthew chapter 6 verse, verse 25 it says therefore I say to you do not worry about your life about what you eat what you drink what your body is going to to wear the dressings your health let's worry about what is my relationship with God today? If Christ was going to come today, where will I be? If Christ is going to come today and is going to call out names, is my name going to be among those that he's going to call out? Am I being reconciled back to God? Imagine God calls you and I his friends. You and I, we are the friends of God which is the highest place anyone else can place you in this community. I can call you my friend today. Yes, tomorrow we cross roads, you're not my friend, but our friendship with God is constant. God calls us his friends. And one of the greatest commandments that God calls you for, for you and I is that we love one another. When we love one another and we live at peace with one another, we are being reconciled back to him because Christ just desires that we love one another be at love be at peace with one another reconciliation with God is one of those needs that God seeks from us that we seek every other day we seek being reconciled with him we seek the poverty of the soul and then together with all those with the other things I'm going to mention even as we go on we shall be restored back to him Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 says, Now all things are of God who has reconciled us for himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, but has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation is so important that it is a ministry on its own, that God is seeking for us to be continually reconciled. It's a ministry on its own, that every day when you wake up and you reconcile and you bring reconciliation between people, before God, you have done so much. Apart from you just seeking what you were looking at yesterday, what you were looking at, uh, the needs of friendship, the needs of intimacy, the needs of employment, the needs of property. Just apart from you looking at those needs, if you wake up today and you go out and just bring reconciliation between brethren, you have done so much in the kingdom of God. Let us seek to be reconciled one to another. Let us seek to be at peace with one another. The Bible says, pursue peace with every person 
that is one thing that kills reconciliation between human beings. Let us seek to pursue peace with one another. When you when you pursue peace, where there is peace, there is reconciliation. There is no way there's going to be reconciliation without peace. There's no way there's going to be reconciliation without unity. These basic needs for we believers are very important, are very important for our day-to-day life. It is my prayer that even as we, 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 we seek reconciliation with God, as we seek reconciliation with Christ, as we seek reconciliation to be able to get into the throne, the throne room of God, remember our sins were forgiven at the cross and we've been given access into the throne room. I pray that even as we seek to go into the throne room of God, we shall be reconciled with God and even with one another because that is a ministry on its own. So my brothers and sisters, as you're watching, as you're listening, as you're working, I know probably you're working, you're driving to work, you're busy in your kitchen doing something. Remember, God is seeking for you and I to be reconciled back to him. Everything else you're seeking is good. It is very good. But let us be reconciled back to him. And one of the best places to start with reconciliation is giving your life to Jesus Christ. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, kindly say this prayer uh, after me. My Father and my God, I come before you this morning and thank you for your word. And I pray that you may, you may heal my life, you may restore my life, you may, give, you may help me give my life to you this day. Write my name in the book of life. Give me a new life today. I believe that I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you have said that prayer before me, please uh, inbox us, write your name, send your name on that number, and also connect yourself to a Bible believing church so that you continue growing as a believer. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining. See you tomorrow. God bless you. Amen.